The seventh episode of Shogun is just around the corner, and I imagine, if you're like me, then many of you would have watched the trailer for the next episode several times in order to try and guess what could potentially be coming up. After watching it, there was one scene in particular that I just couldn't quite shake from my head, and it was this one here. The one where Torunaga-sama was meeting with a stranger, somebody that we hadn't seen before in the show, and it looked like a rather ominous, tense moment. So I thought I'd do some digging and try to work out who this could be and the meaning of the scene that's taking place. So let's not wait any longer and let's get into it. Here is Shogun Episode 7, The Meaning of This Scene. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. So during the previous episode, we saw that Toranaga-sama realized that he had no other options left in order to survive unless he launched an attack on Osaka Castle. Realizing that Ishido had essentially made the Council of Regents obsolete and that Lady Ochiba no Kata was puppeteering the whole dismantling of it and demanding his death, he now understood that the only way to get out of the situation at hand was to go to war with the West, Ishido and Lady Ochiba. During the episode, Hiromatsu mentioned how Crimson Sky was something which had always been on the back burner, which was a plan to storm Osaka Castle, defeat the opposition there, dismantle the government and form a new one, which would ultimately then make Toranaga-sama Shogun. However, in his closing speech, Toranaga mentioned that he wasn't going to demand any titles and that he didn't want to be above any others and be Shogun. But I think this is Toranaga just showing how smart he is. I believe he definitely wants to be Shogun, but I just don't think he's letting it on to others that he does. There are people that he can't trust amongst his own men, so I feel he's keeping certain things close to his chest. When he was talking about Crimson Sky, it was said that Ishido's allies controlled the gates to Osaka and that trying to storm Osaka Castle would be like the equivalent of having your hands around your own neck, essentially meaning that you'd be walking into the jaws of death. This is where it was then mentioned that Toranaga would need to form an alliance with his brother if there was any chance of the plan progressing forward. Within the novel, Toranaga's brother is called Sataki. However, Hiromatsu said that his brother was called Saiki Nobutatsu, so I feel within this scene in the trailer, this is going to be Toranaga meeting with his half-brother. Within the 80s show, Father Martin Alvito was also there too, and with us seeing him in the previous episode contemplating if he should have sided with Toranaga, I think that's going to be something that occurs here too. Toranaga's brother won't be on his own, but Father Martin Alvito will probably be alongside him. Within the novel, his half-brother actually declared himself against Toranaga like most of the daimyo in the area and swore his loyalty to Ishido and the council. In this scene, it seems like there is a bit of friction that's going to be present amongst the both of them. However, there does seem to be respect on both sides still. The fact that they're both opposite each other and quite literally on two different sides of the frame, it seems like it's a visual representation of the fact that at this moment in time, they're on two different sides of the war. And despite being family members, they have different beliefs and alliances. I imagine Toranaga is trying to side with his half-brother for a couple of different reasons. One, because his army was decimated with the earthquake and landslide that happened a couple of episodes back, and knows that he doesn't have an army strong enough to take on Ishido. And secondly, because his half-brother is probably the only person that he feels he can most likely reach out to and meet with that has loyalties with Ishido and the council in Osaka, where he won't immediately be escorted back to Osaka or be killed instantly. When both Toranaga and his brother meet, it's a meeting that doesn't have any pleasantries between them. With him being on the side of Ishido, he arrives with an order from the council for Toranaga to go to Osaka and follow the orders of the council. Or if he doesn't, he's ordered to leave and commit seppuku. This is something which Toranaga actually considers for a brief moment, and I feel we're going to be seeing that occurring in the next episode. Hence why Nagakado asked his father what it was that they were going to be doing, and if they'd be dying with blood on their sword, meaning in battle. The options are either Storm Osaka like Crimson Sky states, or it's a decision to not risk the lives of his men if he thinks that it's going to be a failed attempt and ultimately commit seppuku. But I think we know what Toranaga's going to do. So with Toranaga saying to his brother that he'll let him know within 24 hours, that's something that will be going through Toranaga's mind and I imagine we will be seeing depicted on screen. Even though Toranaga's half-brother is on the side of Ishido, this scene between the both of them will lay down the foundations of the family dynamic that's present between the both of them, and we'll see that although he is loyal to Ishido on the council, there will be something that Toranaga can offer his half-brother in order to try and get him to switch sides. As we've seen, Toranaga is a perceptual person, and there will come a time with Toranaga where he'll realize that his brother has higher ambitions for power and actually wants to be more than what he's letting on. 
It's said that Toronaga realizes that his brother actually wants to be Shogun and is frustrated with the fact that Ishido is infatuated with Lady Yochiba and is falling at her feet at every opportunity that he gets. So Toronaga apparently plans to offer his brother Lady Yochiba's hand in marriage. So this could be one way in which Toronaga could look to get his brother on side and to get his alliance when it comes to the Siege of Osaka Castle and to aim to dismantle the existing council. During the Battle of Sekigahara, the battle which essentially determined the fate of Japan at the time, and whether or not Ishido and the council or Toronaga-sama won, the Eastern Army, which was led by Toronaga, were severely outnumbered by the Western Army. So I don't think that by getting his brother on board, it's going to change things dramatically. But what it might do is show that people's loyalties can be bored. Within history, it's said that with Ishida losing the battle and with Tokugawa Ieyasu coming out as the victor, apparently if more people stayed loyal to Ishida and didn't switch sides to Tokugawa, then the outcome could have been completely different. So this scene could be symbolic of the change that can occur within people if the price is right, and plant the seed for people to abandon Ishido and move over to Toronaga. This might seem like a lot to take away from just a couple of seconds within the trailer, but I wanted to do my best to get as much across as I possibly could and explain the outcome of this scene and why it could be so important. Especially when it comes to the dynamic between the brothers and the loyalties that could be bought, something which will most likely go on to be valuable in future episodes. I think this scene in the next episode is going to be one that will almost mark the beginning of the direction that these final four episodes are going to go in. It will bring Father Martin Alvito to the side of Toronaga alongside his brother when they meet, and I think the relationship between Mariko, John, and Alvito will be one that's just as interesting to watch too. John doesn't like the Portuguese Catholics, and he hasn't since he first arrived there. So with Alvito most likely ending up as a third piece between the two that grew so comfortable, it will change the dynamic greatly. We've not seen Toronaga's half-brother on screen yet, so I'm intrigued to see how this meeting's going to go down and what exactly is going to happen. I've explained what I think is going to happen. I just hope that I've actually got this right and this is in a completely different meeting. Can you imagine? Cuh. With only a few days to go, bring on the next episode. So, there you have it. Shogun Episode 7, The Meaning of This Scene. If you want to see more videos on Shogun, then click on the card in the top corner. I've been covering every episode and I've also been delving into the real historical figures that the characters are based on. So if you want to enter the world of Shogun even more, then head over to the channel. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What do you think is going to happen in the next episode of Shogun? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. As always, thanks for tuning into the video and I'll see you in the next one.